Hello everyone, this is 10 Rules All, and I'm back again today with another Battlefield 1 commentary. And in the background, the gameplay footage that you are about to see is Conquest. A little bit of Conquest actually on both Foul Fortress and Monte Grappa. Uh, I go on a couple of really nice streaks in some of these gameplays, uh, but it will still be a little shorter video. I just wanted to bring this to you today to discuss the new DLC coming out for Battlefield 1 called In the Name of the Czar. More specifically, I wanted to talk to you about their introducing female characters to the game with this new expansion. So, In the Name of the Tsar finally introduces the Russian army as a playable faction, which, as you know, I've been calling for pretty much since this game came out. So that's exciting to me. We're going to finally get some uh, new countries. I've really enjoyed playing as the French so far. I thought uh, it was a nice breath of fresh air. And I think it's going to be the same case here with the Russians. And some of these new Eastern Front maps I'm thinking are going to be pretty sweet as well. Maybe we'll get some winter or night maps. Um, so with the addition of the Russian army then comes the introduction of the said female characters. You will be able to play as a woman only if you're playing as the Russians and using the scout class. In which case you will be playing as a member of the 1st Russian Women's Battalion of Death. Which is just a great name. Now this battalion was not the first instance of women fighting during World War I. Women would actually join while keeping their gender a secret and they were also very much vital outside of that to the war effort on the home front. But in the spring of 1917, these all-female battalions were organized and actually did take part in some of the fighting uh, right up until the Russians left the war. So naturally, a lot of people are having an issue with the inclusion of women in the game. Most of the excuses I've heard, at least those that have a shred of rationale to them, are that, well, women didn't fight in World War One, Which I've just said to be a complete fallacy. Women did fight in World War One, and it shouldn't be understated the impact that they had on the home front also. But ultimately, it depends on what EA and DICE want out of Battlefield One, what their goal is, what they want to give to us, the audience, the consumer. Is this game supposed to be hyper-realistic? If so, then yeah, include women only for the Russians. But if you're not going for that hardcore level of realism, at, at that point I kind of just say who cares? Include both genders if you really want to, because including female characters in a video game hurts absolutely nobody. And it really only serves to make things more interesting. Not to mention the fact that if you've actually played through the campaign, which I strongly recommend, the campaign is awesome, you've already played as a female character. And on VG247.com they have an article from June of 2016, so almost a year ago now, discussing this same issue. And the name of this article is Battlefield 1 doesn't have female soldiers because, quote, boys wouldn't find it believable, end quote. So, you know, obviously we've est established that women did serve combat roles in World War I. And at, when this game was being pitched in the beginning, it was basically that, and, and this is a quote too, Screw realism, we're adding female soldiers because we're way overdue, end quote. That was when they were pitching this game. And then they come back to say, Turns out Battlefield 1 was going for realism after all. Female characters matter, but, quote, it's just not the game we're making, end quote. That's an article from 2016, so they have obviously changed course since then on this concept. But what are they going for? 
do they want it to be extremely realistic or not? Because I don't think you can really sit in the middle on this one. You know, you, you've got guns that are relevant to the era. You've got the vehicles that, you know, were all introduced during World War One or were very prominently used during World War One. The maps take place in areas where there were actually pitched battles during World War One. You know, there were, all these things are historically accurate, so why not this? And, you know, to those of you that think, oh, well, women just don't belong in war, well, that's bullshit. They have proven time and time again that they deserve to be recognized right next to their male counterparts. But, again, it's a video game. How much does it really matter? So, I guess, ultimately, my point is that getting shot by a woman hurts just as badly as getting shot by a man, even though women do tend to aim for the genitals, but that's a whole other story. But I don't know about the rest of you, but Battlefield 1 has been consistently improving in my eyes thus far. I loved the, the last DLC pack that came out, and in the name of the Tsar is looking like it's going to be no different. Uh, expansion looks great. I'm excited to play as the Russians. I think the female characters look very interesting, and I think their story is very interesting, and they have, like I said, one of the most badass names for a battalion I've ever heard. So, what's your opinion on the matter? How much does this actually matter to you? I mean, in a first-person shooter, how often do you actually see your own character? So let me know in the comments what you feel on the subject. Like the video, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you really enjoyed and you want to hear more my ranting on topics such as this. And follow me on Twitch as well if you want to come hang out live at twitch.tv forward slash 10 rules all. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.